principles of chemistry one. Uh, normally this would be your first lab, and that is physical and chemical properties. So today I'll be preparing a short demo for you on what would usually happen in the lab. And I'll share with you the results, um, you can watch them as we go along. And in the end, you'll be responsible to write up a laboratory report. So let's get straight into it with the first experiment. So as we look through our procedures, and the first thing we should have done was observe all the chemicals. We look at the color, the odor, and basically what state the chemicals are in. So we previously did that. I will be sharing that data with you in a table. So now we can just jump into the first experiment, which is with vinegar. So we have vinegar here, and we require 20 mLs of vinegar. Of course, we do all readings at eye level when measuring. That way we get exact values. So we have our 20 mLs of vinegar, put that inside a beaker. Now a common mistake students always make is they don't read through the procedures first. Before you add the scoop of baking soda to that vinegar, you have to light the splits. So you have to light the splint because you'll need to place a burning splint inside when you add that scoop. So here we have the baking soda and a spatula. Bunsen burner, we adjust our flame. First you lower the flame and then you open the oxygen intake. We have a burning splint, see it's still on fire. Get our scoop of baking soda. Doesn't require a lot. And as soon as you add that, you want to put the flame inside. And what do you observe? Notice the splint, it outs. We try again if before it stops bubbling. Another scoop. Notice the flame, it outs. That's experiment number one. Quick and easy. Experiment number two we have magnesium ribbon. So it comes as a silvery piece of metal. We want 2 cm of that. So if we just measure about 2 cm of magnesium ribbon. And um, we already cleaned it with sandpaper. Um, if you notice the way it comes, sometimes it forms an oxide layer. So we want to clean off that oxide layer first. And then we can just pinch and break off a 2 cm piece. Then we want to get 4 ml of hydrochloric acid. So we use a 10 ml measuring cylinder, clean pipette. Okay, we have four mils of the acid. Add that to our test tube. 
zoom in here and see what happens when we add the metal. Notice there's a smoke coming off. As that metal produces some effervescence and eventually dissolves. Is it gone? Yep, no more magnesium metal. Experiment two completed. The next experiment we're gonna need one boiling tube and one test tube. Um, normal students confuse the difference. What we refer to as a test tube is the normal tin glass tube. It has a rim, while the boiling tube is the thicker hard glass that's rimless. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some sugar and add a scoop to each tube. So some sugar goes in the boiling tube, some sugar goes into the test tube. Let's deal with the test tube first. The sugar in the test tube to that says to add distilled water to half the tube. So we have our deionized water. Just going to add some of that inside the tube. Remember this is a two part experiment. So the test tube with sugar, once we've added that water, we invert to mix. And as you've observed, that sugar dissolves. Part two is our boiling tube. So let's first relight our burner. Again, you lower the flame first, open the oxygen intake, and you should get a blue flame. Now a caution that we give students when doing this is you don't want to heat too fast and also we're going to only heat it until it turns black. You'll see as we go through that the sugar will eventually change color. So first we heat gently. Always remember to point the boiling tube away from you or any of your partners. You don't want to injure anyone. So let's pause here and start zooming in. You see the sugar starts to change color, it's becoming molten, and there is some gas coming off from the tube. So as we continue to heat more strongly, goes from a yellow to an almost red-brown color and if you would take a waft of that, that smell we get that sweet caramel smell if any of you make syrup at home you should be familiar with that smell continue heating and once it gets brown and fully molten we're gonna stop right there because if we go any further, the sugar will then just be completely dehydrated. It'll combust and it'll stain the tube black. So this is as far as we go. Any more burning will just completely burn out the sugar and it'll stain the tube black and be harder for us to clean. So we're gonna stop here, turn that off 
Again, if you want to look closely, notice it's already getting black. This tube is very hot, so we don't want to handle or wash it as yet, so we leave it here for us to clean up later. That's basically experiment number three. That's a two-part experiment. Next, so we're going to have to use the scale and we're going to combine one to two grams of sand with one to two grams of salt. So our sand and our salt, spatulas, and we'll move over to the scale. Here we have our electronic balance. Turn it on. Wait for that to calibrate. We add a weighing boat onto the electronic balance and we normally just zero so that we don't have to worry about the mass of the weighing boat. That tears the scale. Taking a while. And then we can just weigh the sand. So anywhere between one to two grams should work. So that's 1.30 grams. Let's try to get the same. For the salt or just generally the same range. They don't have to match exactly, but that should work. So we have 1.30 sand, 1.36 salt. Take this back to the area. So we get another 150 ml beaker. We're gonna combine the salt. The sand into a beaker. It says to add 30 ml of water. So we have 30 ml of water, we add that and we mix. obviously know that that salt should dissolve but the sand will not dissolve so we have that sand settling to the bottom while the salt should have dissolved into the mixture now we're going to prepare to filter that solution so we have a retort stand a ring clamp. Funnel. When we're filtering, we normally want the funnel to just sit inside and kiss the edge of the beaker or container. That angle is to help it pull down the liquid through capillary reaction. That way you don't have any splash and it tends to form a steady stream. We're gonna prepare the filter paper. So we have some qualitative filter paper here. And to prepare the filter paper to go into the funnel, you just 
first fold, one fold, and you take that and fold again. So you fold it into quarters, and you take one of those sides, you open, slightly pinch the bottom, set it in, and you just dampen it a bit. Way it stays in and you should be ready to start filtering now another advice when filtering if you have some solid that remains advise that you decant first so you let it settle and then you just pour liquid through the filter paper and when there is no more liquid the last thing you'll do is take a squirt bottle and wash the solids So again, we just get the liquid through first. While we're waiting for this to filter, let's move on to the next experiment. We'll come back to that one. So this one is a reaction with silver nitrate. So we have two pieces of white paper. These are just some recycled pieces of paper. And we have silver nitrate here. Silver nitrate is a pretty special chemical. Um, we have to store it in an amber glass bottle because it tends to react with light. So in these two pieces of paper, we're just gonna take and add a few drops of silver nitrate on each. And we're going to take one strip, put it inside the jar here. That should represent a dark area. And then the second strip, we're going to take this outside. Here that has a lot of sunlight. So this should be pretty fine. Just gonna put this here to hold it down. And we're gonna leave that for five minutes. Salt and sand mixture. It's pretty much almost finished filtering. We should have enough liquid to do the second part of that experiment. What I'm now preparing for is for us to evaporate that salt and sand mixture. So we have a ring clamp with a wire gauze on top and for evaporating dish we'll be using half of a petri dish that works just as fine. Remember I said we transfer the washings lastly so we're just going to use minimal water to get all that in. Now I need 10 mLs of that liquid, the filtrate.
So we have 10 ml of the filtrate. We're gonna add that to our evaporating dish. And again. Flame first, open the oxygen. Make sure it doesn't fall. We're just gonna move the flame around below. And evaporate this solution. Okay, five minutes have passed. Let's check back on our sheets with the silver nitrate so this is the one that was in the dark uh, normally there should be no color change but because we had it slightly exposed for a while you can see a bit of a yellow color and then the one outside if you notice those two drops they stain the paper black. So silver nitrate would do the same thing if it got on your hands. That's why we always want students to wear gloves. And this normally doesn't come off for about a week or more because the skin has to die for the silver nitrate to be removed. We'll continue with the evaporation. Again, all right we're almost done evaporating if you notice we have some white crystals forming the last bit of the water is evaporating off now and that's pretty much finished it's popping like popcorn but it's done so those crystals that evaporate out back, I'm sure most of you students should know what that is. And as we take a look back over here at the residue that remains inside the filter paper, so we still have that off-white residue that remains, and that should be our sand while well, that is our salt. Just throw this away. Now for our final experiment, we're gonna need some sulfur and some iron filings and a piece of filter paper bar magnet. So sulfur of course is the yellow powder and the iron filings are these rusted pieces of metal. So we want to weigh again four grams of each. We have here a pestle and a mortar. We're just going to combine the sulfur and the iron filings. And the pestle and mortar. And we're going to grind it together. See that's mixed in pretty well. And we're gonna take that spread it 
spread it out on a piece of paper. So it looks almost green. Now watch what happens when we take one of our bar magnets and pass it over. If you zoom in, as we pass the bar magnet over, it's picking up all the iron filings from out this mixture and they're kind of following the magnetic field lines that's why they have that strange pattern so notice the iron filings are just separating itself out of the mixture with the sulfur all iron filings That's pretty much it. That's our final experiment. So again, just to review, we had the vinegar with the baking powder. That had some effervescence, it dissolved, and then it out the burning splint. We had the two reactions with the sugar. We had the magnesium ribbon inside the acid. We had the salt and the sand. So we have the salt here and the sand was in the filter paper. And then we had the reactions with the silver nitrate. So thank you for tuning in. Um, instructions will follow for the rest of your lab preparation. And see you next time.